In this Kotlin on Android Camera 2 API tutorial, we're going to show you how to select a particular lens, whether it's the rear facing or front facing lens. Welcome to Mobile Application Tutorials. My name's Nigel. Okay, so we're moving on with the camera API series um, using the Kotlin language. We are now in episode three here, getting ID for the camera device. And as I said in the intro, the ID basically represents which camera lens you want to use, whether it's the front facing or rear facing camera lens. So we'll be working on that. So it is recommended you do the two previous tutorials beforehand, but if you do want to jump straight into here, you can. In this article, which is available if you sign up for free, this free YouTube membership I provide for that, I will put the GitHub details of where you can get the code to start this tutorial. Um, as you can see, there's a video down here that's applied to members on the professional plan or members who buy this particular series here for the price of 10 US dollars. They get a, a helper video showing them how to download the code and get prepped up to start this particular tutorial. Okay, so let's make a start. We want to go into our Android Studio. Okay, the first thing we need to do to actually get access to camera hardware is to use an instance of the camera manager. And that's supplied to us by the Android service. So I'm going to create a, a new uh, value here. I'll make a private. It's going to be a value. We'll call it camera manager. And it's going to get initialized when it's first called. So we'll use the by lazy. Okay, to get the camera manager, I'm going to need to call the uh, referring activity here we'll need to do a safe call and then it's a matter of get system service and it's a name of the service is supplied to us by the context and it's the camera service we want and this is a generic call so it will need to be cast as a camera manager okay so we've got now got the camera manager available to us so it gets initialized when we first call it Okay, underneath that is, I'm gonna create another function here, and this is gonna be a helper function. Basically, whichever lens you use, if it's front-facing or rear-facing lens, each lens can have a different, let's call it camera characteristics, because <laughs> so it can have a different characteristics here. And so I'm gonna set up a helper function just to support characteristics that you want to get from a particular camera. And the characteristics will be whether or not the actual lens is front facing or rear facing. That's a characteristic. Um, the display supported uh, surfaces that support like preview display. That's another characteristic. There's hundreds of them. We'll go back. I'll show you the um, actual uh, list of all the characteristics that we can support in Android. Anyway, let's start work on this function. So. I'm going to create another private here. It's going to be a function. And what we're going to do is it's going to use generic types. So it's going to pass in a particular generic type because characteristics can be of many different types. They can be booleans, ints, objects. It's quite a comprehensive list. So we're going to make a what we call a generic type function here. And now I'll give get the name. And I'm just going to call this name caret. Actually, I'll put the space down here. so. You can easily see what I'm typing. So it's going to be camera characteristics. And it's going to take, and the first argument is going to be the, the actual ID because the characteristics specific to a particular camera lens, front or rear facing. And so we have to select that particular ID for the camera. So I'm just going to call it the first uh, parameter camera ID. And it will be of the type string. And the next one's going to be the actual characteristics key. Just let me put this in here first. 
I'm just going to call this key and if we call the camera characteristics dot key that didn't work and we're going to pass just a generic type for that and it's going to return the type keyword let's put some closing braces okay so the camera characteristics key can be a generic type of anything we'll look at that a little bit later on and it's going to return so it could be returning a boolean or a string so we need to put it returning okay so now that i've got the camera id i can actually specify the uh, characteristics request to get the ca uh, camera characteristics list so i'm going to create a value for that and i'll just call this characteristics And we can actually get that by calling our camera manager now. And that's when it will probably get initialized. And get camera characteristics. And the only ID it needs is the camera ID, which we're passing down to this uh, through the function of parameter. Okay, so we've got now got the characteristics for that. And remember, we are going to be returning the, char the camera characteristics for a specific key. So underneath here, I will call the return and I will mute my sound you don't want to hear my ugly keyboard mistakes so we are going to return and it's going to return a Kotlin when expression so when expressions are the like the old switches but they're better because they can actually hold and return a value and so we will pass in our uh, key this time camera characteristics key okay the first thing we want to do is in case someone passes a key that's not supported so we will throw an illegal argument exception and I'll just put in here key or cat key not re colonized okay it's like a catch-all situation if we don't recognize the key okay the first thing I, uh, key i want to check is actually going to be the camera id because we're going to set up a following function of getting the camera id for a specific lens sort of chicken and egg situation here anyway so um i'll call the camera characteristics and the front one's going to be lens facing so we want to see if the lens is facing um, uh, that will be specified in this key argument if it's a forward or red facing lens and so we will turn that value so we will now call our characteristics that we just created call a get I was going to say get and we just pass in the key value and so this will re return the approximately key it's probably it's a string which represents a number if that makes sense so it's going to return a string of zero or a string of one which particular uh, for the camera ID that we will need to use to connect to that uh, particular camera device okay and I'm going to do the same thing here just as another example and this one's going to be the scalar screen configuration map and again we'll just call characteristics dot get and pass in the key so as you can see here you can put in as many of these as you want because um, uh, the, this, will just, this will just support whatever keys passed down to it so I've just put the second one in as an example we're not going to be currently using it in this particular series this particular camera 2 series okay so let me show you the camera characteristics and their keys so if we pop across to um, uh, Google Chrome and up here I'm just going to select camera characteristics you can easily find it from the Google documentation Android documentation and as you can see these are all the keys and you can see that integers or interarrays, float arrays, um, booleans, 
it's the list goes on and as you can see this is a comprehensive list of what you can extract from uh, the features of a particular uh, camera device whether it's front or rear and they'll probably differ as well so if I do a search in here for facing and so this is the one I want which is a lens facing so I want to know the direction whether it's rear facing or front facing lens for this particular tutorial because we want to get the preview display displaying and I want the rear facing lens okay so let's jump back into the code here okay so this func this function is now complete for that now we're going to create a function that returns a specific camera ID to a front facing or a rear facing lens so I'm going to create another function here and I'm going to call this camera ID this will return the camera ID value and we want to specify I just call it lens represents the front facing or rear facing lens and that's going to be of the type value and the actual camera ID if we just go back the actual camera ID itself is going to be of type string I need to create a temporary value here just to get the contents of the result of our, um, finding our camera ID and I'll call this um, I'll just call this device ID camera ID and device ID are interchangeable they basically mean the same thing and this is going to be a let's do a list of and make them of the type string okay now I'm gonna call camera ID list uh, and I can get that from the camera manager in camera ID list okay and I'm just gonna click F1 on this let's wait for that to appear okay basically what we get will be a string of the connected camera devices representing You've got at least two on most cameras front and rear and also note at the bottom there it returns a camera access exception so we'd better put a trap harness on that and I'll change that to ca was a camera access exception and what we will do is we'll just log that to an error okay so I've got my camera ID list and that will specify everything what I want to do is the parameter we're passing we're calling it lens we want to match that against that list and return the result from that so what we're going to do is we're going to call camera ID list is actually a list of strings we can it gives us our filter so we can actually if we pass in a parameter there we can filter the results so what we want to do is match our parameter lens at the top of the function against and here we can call our camera characteristics that we created in the uh, just before and we will pass down the actual filter list here the camera ID list we're going to set that call that and we can just call that by it and that's going to be each element of the list is going to be passed down so I'll do the check there so it's basically passing down the camera ID each camera ID each element in this list will be checked basically and we need to specify in our camera characteristics what we want to check against so we'll call camera characteristics and we're checking against the lens current facing lens or the lens facing so we're just going to match the results against that and this will actually return a result so let's return the result of that to our device ID and we're getting an error here uh, this is a typical Kotlin error a vowel cannot be reassigned so we're going to have to change that to a variable a writable um, a writable variable okay and finally we just return it that's the device ID and it's 
should only ever return one element in the result. Even though it's a string, we just want to get the first string. It's only going to return one result, and that will be our device ID. Okay, so this will successfully return our device ID. You know, uh, basically we want to get the device ID for the rear camera there. What I what I will do now is I'm going to create a, another function underneath here, and this is going to be the actual connect to that particular camera device. And I'll call the current fun connect camera. And it's not going to take any camera. Uh, any parameters or return anything and so what we can do here is call it a call it value device or camera ID equals now we can call our camera ID and pass in let's just do camera characteristics and I want lens facing back and so what this will do is return the device ID for the rear lens and this device ID is really important we need that as part of making a request connection to that the rear camera hardware okay and let's just log that data uh, just debug a log from the tag and I'll just call it device ID and it'll be device ID so we just want to print out the results of that in our logs just to see what it is and we will need to call camera so from the previous tutorial we will call it from down here so if we have permissions we can actually start accessing camera camera hardware so I'm going to do the connect camera call here and we'll call down and get the camera ID. Okay, at this stage, I'm going to stop the tutorial because all I wanted to cover was the camera ID, how it represents forward or red facing lens. In the following tutorial, we're going to use that value to actually make a connection. We'll have to set up a couple of other parameters as well, but we will go through that in the following tutorial. So what we'll do now is to run this and see what the camera ID is. Applications now started up. I will highlight this and basically if we look at this It's the same the device ID for the rear camera lens is zero So that's what we'll need to pass through for our connecting to that camera device and that completes this tutorial um, of how to get a camera ID uh, using the Kotlin programming language. Uh, as you can see, it's not entirely straightforward getting the camera ID. You first of all, need to create a instance of the camera manager, and then you need to get the camera ID list, and then filter that. And we use the Kotlin filter for that. For that, filter that to get your desired ID for the ID, whether or not you want the rear lens, which is what we're currently working on, or you want the front lens. And so that completes this tutorial. If you do want to get notified of these tutorials, and don't forget, this is number three in the list, don't forget to click on that YouTube subscribe uh, button. And remember, all these episodes are currently available on the site right now. Um, at 10, it's a fee of 10 US dollars to get hold of them, and that includes the last two uh, episodes, which won't be going on YouTube or made public. And so you can get those now. If not, uh, each one of these tutorials will get released to the site on a weekly basis first of all to the site and then following that towards the end of the week they get made available on youtube as well and please don't post any questions to youtube it's not a good forum for me to respond to i can't find half the questions after they've been posted so if you do have questions i am very busy so you will have to pay for my time to answer them you can do that in code mentor i will leave um, the uh, contact details up there and i do recommend that you sort of do watch my twitter feed and my facebook because that's where i post anything related to this channel including uh tutorial releases and i'll put a handle up there as well anyway thank you for taking the time to watch this one bye for now